Um, has anyone heard of ICE, the Information and Cultural Exchange? Yeah. <laughs> um, we're an organisation that's been around for about 20 years in Western Sydney. I recently joined up about four months ago, so I'm the first marketing and communications manager that ICE has ever had. And we get a lot of government funding, so about 95% of our funding comes from government. Um, we're one of the 11 key producers for the Australia Council, so we work with a lot of other cultural community organisations to kind of um, collaborate and produce the work that Australia Council wants to see out there. We also get a lot of support from um, New South Wales government, Arts New South Wales, community services and whatnot. So we're looking to kind of build that capacity and get more um, philanthropic money and corporate money and things to keep things sort of moving on. I'm the Cultural Development Program Manager at the moment. And some of the programs that we produce are centred around screen culture, urban culture and community engagement. I just want to give you a couple of examples of some kind of major productions that we've been working on in the last couple of years. Um, East London, West Sydney is an amazing partnership we have with British Council Australia and um, has, is now part of the Sydney Festival program and that was about bringing artists from the UK and Western Sydney together to create some amazing new work um, which will be presented in January as part of the Sydney Festival. I suppose we've taken a pretty good lead in Western Sydney and Sydney in general with our digital storytelling program. Um, partnering with a number of organisations across Western Sydney um, and to work with young and emerging um, artists, mainly people who are interested in writing and film production, um, to produce digital stories that talk about their experiences as young um, people from Western Sydney, most of them are from a refugee and migrant background and many of them have only been in Australia for less than five years. So getting those stories and profiling them at forums, events and festivals is a kind of um, really important aspect of the production. So it's not just producing the work, it's also marketing the work and you know getting that recognised in the mainstream. myself and how it's, a, it's one way that I can express myself and my identity. Um, hip hop is definitely who I am and where I'm at in my own headspace and in my life, so I try and talk about that and express that on stage to the world. Our culture, I think you will rock. Moving the long guts, I check your legs, moving to the drum. My people's rock in the center, turn it up to me. Promise, love your fist. Hey, 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 present one of their films to give the, our audience uh, variety. Through film, the rest of the world can see cultures where people dream and hope and pray. You know, this is a very multicultural society, seeing a film like that you know, really uh, plays along well with all of us. marketing um, those really grassroots community programs because I think a lot of the time, like Porna said, you have to just get out there and get down on the grassroots level and, and kind of hand out flyers and, you know, engage with community leaders to spread the word around that the project's happening or we've got a new project on at the moment called Rise and it's like a hip hop, you know, urban dance theatre <coughs> um, and parkour as well. So it's a project that's running, you know, towards the throughout the rest of the year and we're printing up flyers and just um, project coordinators going down to the schools and handing them out so there's lots of different ways that you can market depending on whether you're you know trying to get um, participants involved and who those participants are and where you're going to find them we recently um, produced well over a couple of years actually 
produced an African um, a resource about African parenting stories. So we went out and we made digital stories with them, and both audio and on DVD, and we just kind of showcased their stories. So it's about amplifying their voices and getting the word out there. We also worked on uh, with Bethel Council on a DVD called Under the Law, which is a similar resource for African families, but it's teaching them um, about Australian law. So really simple things that we take for granted about having a license and you know, um, you know what you can carry around, like knives or whatever. Um, quite innocently, they just don't know the rules. So we uh, worked with Federal Council and um, we worked with some of our great producers and, and created this really um, cool little movie um, about what to do and what not to do with like actors from the community. Um, one of the projects that you saw profiled on this is called the Arab Film Festival, which started in 2001 um, and was established um, as uh, through ICE um, in partnership with a number of other arts and cultural organisations in Western Sydney. The Arab Film Festival is, I suppose, a, a pretty, a really, really important project um, for us, and um, I have been privileged to be working on that project for a number of years now. So from its kind of beginning in 2001, um, it actually came out of an exhibition called The East of Somewhere, which was held at Kasula Powerhouse. Um, a number of Arab uh, artists were submitting films instead of, you know, the kind of traditional visual art work, and um, Kasula and ICE and a number of other organisations come together and decided, look, it's, there's enough material being produced by Arab artists locally and internationally to actually put on and invest in um, <coughs> establishing a festival. There's no other Arab film festival in Australia, which um, I suppose makes it um, more attractive to funding bodies and to sponsors, and it attracts over 3,000 people annually, um, and it's now developed a touring program with the support from the Australia Council and the Human Rights Commission. Their, their funding has actually helped us design the national tour and actually take it on the road. I'll tell you a bit about our marketing campaign. We target, we do everything, a bit of everything. We don't, we, we develop a major marketing campaign, but we have little miniature marketing campaigns within them. We basically come together and um, once the films are selected, we look at the films and look at the message the film um, is sending out and who it may appeal to and who we want it to appeal to. And then, you know, design the kind of distribute, you know, implement marketing campaign according to that. So for example, a Lebanese film, I'll just give you an example, a Lebanese film about hairdressers in Beirut. You know, who do you think that's going to appeal to? Some young groovy left chicks and maybe their partners and maybe their pet, not you. Okay. Um, but it appealed to a really broad audience. It appealed to academics. They ripped it to shreds and wrote lots about it and talked lots about it. I was really surprised. I didn't see some of the things they saw and I watched it five times over. Um, it appealed to the young, funky, second generation Arab Australians, um, to their parents. Like lots of, there were some young guys I remember that called and said, oh, do you think this is okay for my mum to come to? You know, do you think she's going to get offended? Is there any nudity? Is there any kissing? <laughs> no, it's cool, just bring your mum. Give you an example about kooky kind of campaigning. Um, we found out one day that there was a big gathering, like over a thousand people at a, a church in um, Harris Park. It's called Our Lady of Lebanon. And our opening night film that year was a Lebanese film. So we had <coughs> a thousand postcards and we waited till they all went into the church ceremony and we did over the car park. <laughs> so we, yes, we ran, so we weren't dressed up, we had our joggers and stuff and we just ran through, it was dark, no one caught us and we were good. <laughs> um, but many people came because we were asking, you know, randomly kind of saying, how did you find out about this? And they go, oh, the church, the church, put on my car. Use YouTube previews, so we put previews of films as a teaser, and all the filmmakers usually supply us with a, uh, you know, a trailer. Partnership with sponsors and, and government is also really important because they don't, it's not just about them giving you the money, it's also about you utilising their networks to promote <coughs> projects they've funded. They, you know, they are still a part of the, the project, so get them involved and consult with them as the project is developing. Um, yeah, I, look, it, annually it grows, annually the workload gets 
bigger, mm. um, but it's worth it. And yeah, I hope it continues for a very long time because there's nothing like it in the country.